Hi there, it's Tracy at Butch and Sundance K9. I've been wanting to do this video as a review about the fit and choice of prong collars and e-collar fitting for a while. And I decided today was the day because I was also excited that I got my shirt in the mail. Um, really says it all. You know, our dogs need us to guide them and teach them in a human world. They only know what we teach. So, prong collar review. Herm Springer, everyone knows by now we want some, a really high quality prong collar. It has some beveled edges. Um, the links are gonna be strong so they don't easily bend. Um, a lot of the versions you'll see do not have this extra buckle. I've found a place to get this so that instead of undoing prongs every time you want to put take this on or off your dog, which isn't that big of a deal, but this buckle lets you do a really quick snap and it's very secure. So either way, whether your prong collar looks like this or without this buckle, um, all of this will apply. So. As you know, the prong collar has a stop. This O-ring is your, your stop mechanism so that you can set the collar to the degree that you want the kind of tightness or squeezing action of the collar. Now, in general, these were designed to sit high and, and snug on the neck, just behind the ears on your dog in almost every case. However, when I'm introducing these to dogs, especially older dogs who've been maybe wearing harnesses for quite a while and are just no longer so familiar with sensation around the neck, I like to start with the collar very loose until I see how they're going to respond and if they're going to be very sensitive to the pressure or not very sensitive. And then I decide maybe over a couple initial sessions, um, I'm taking out link by link to get it more snug and where I want it to, to sit in uh, for long-term use. Uh, so I'll show you that when we get that on Pony. So this is the size medium uh, from Herm Springer. There are just three sizes. You can see there's quite a difference between the small and medium. This is a 2.25 gauge and this is a 3.0 gauge. So there's quite a difference, and I find that most dogs up to a medium size are going to fit nicely into the smaller collar. You can purchase extra links, and maybe up to two or three extra links would still be acceptable to fit a dog with a small. On the medium, you can take out two to three links, any more than that, and you're really losing some action because you won't have very min many links left. So it's there's always gonna be some trial and error um, as you find the perfect fit for your dog. Sometimes you're just, you're gonna land sort of in between. So one more link out is too tight. One more link in is a little too loose. I usually, air on the side of more snug, because remember, dogs' necks are completely different than ours. They, are, they aren't going to be bothered by it fitting very snug as a human would, right? So uh, for eventual fitting, I like it to be on the snug side if you find yourself in between. Okay, they do make a micro collar. This is not a Herm Springer, but they did come out with a micro collar it even has the, the little quick release buckle, if you want that, um, for the, the little tiny dogs, the chihuahuas. Um, chihuahuas and other small dogs do very well on these collars and you'll find it um, a lot, uh, a very surprisingly a nice help to, to little dogs um, rather than using their harnesses where you're almost picking them up off the ground and they don't really get an idea of communication. So these, they do make these little tiny micro collars. Um, so we're going to fit the collar on Pony tonight. Where is Pony? Pony! Here she is. All right, so Pony's going to be wearing a small 
Uh, this was just out of the package, so this isn't her regular collar. So I'm gonna go through this as if I'm just fitting a new dog with a new collar. So I like to hold it up first. I wanna make sure that this chain isn't twisted. It's really easy to get that twisted if you don't look at it. So you wanna make sure you have the the chain nice and straight. If it's, one thing that you can do is leave the, if you put the leash on it first, then you have a nice triangle to look at. So you can really see that the chain is not, not twisted and also that all the links are in place. So I do recommend storing this hanging instead of in a drawer or something because if this gets kind of cockeyed and you put it on without noticing it, it's more likely to pop off if your dog pulls uh, sharply or something. So links in place, chain not twisted. So I'm gonna take this and reach under Pony's neck. I'm putting it above her. You can see she's wearing her flat color with her name tag on, which she always wears um, unless she's in her crate. And I'm going to click it on top. Now the, the leash ring is underneath, so I can put my hands under it and spin it so that doesn't pull on the fur or anything. And now I can uh, attach my leash to the D-ring. Now th this is would be a nice fit for a brand new dog. I actually like to have it fairly loose for my initial indoor session, right? So that I'm trying to see if there's uh, any kind of extra sensitivity that I need to be aware of to this pressure. Good, so I'm not giving her any words or anything she has to do that's too difficult yet. I'm just seeing how she responds to this little bit of pressure. Good, on the collar. So for her, this, because she's, a, she's now been wearing a prom for a while, or say I was now in my fourth session or fourth walk, um, if I was just working on my own with my dog, and she's responding really nicely to this. So now I might say, well, you're ready to get this a little higher because I want you to be able to communicate with me through this collar in the best, most, possible way, the most easy way. So if I can get this up higher on her neck, dogs are m much more sensitive, higher. That's actually kind of where their communication happens with each other in their natural world, rather than down low where they're more muscular. So for Pony, I'm gonna take out two links and I'm gonna go ahead and take one out one on each side, just so it's a little bit even around on either side of that buckle. Pony, come here, good girl, good girl. So again, holding it up, nothing's twisted, reach underneath. Quick, I'm gonna put my hands under, I'm gonna spin more slowly now, cause it's more snug now and I don't want it to catch her fur. So there we go. And now I can see where even if I let this loose, how that collar doesn't slide down. So I know it's kind of our human nature to think like, oh man, that just feels so tight. I really wouldn't, that would feel horrible on me. I, I don't want to have it that tight. But understand that they don't have that same sensation that we do. They have more flesh there, they have fur there. They're, they're actually um, just fine with it snug. Uh, again, as long as I've sort of tested out my dog and I've assessed kind of how sensitive they are to pressure. So you could probably even see now the difference, even with a practice dog, how she responds just a little more quickly with it up higher. She knows a little more clearly what good, what I want. Add some praise and you can see that she has no objection to this pressure. It's um, just a line of communication for her. So as you can see, I've been able to pull those prongs in and out to 
uh, change the fit sort of easily. So that's something we really want to keep in mind that they can come out. They're moving parts, so to speak. So I want to have a backup for my prong collar always. It's actually a kind of rare occurrence, but in, but not impossible that your collar could pop off. Always checking it, making sure the links are stay nice and snug over time um, is a nice safeguard. But what I like to do is have a backup, and we can do this in a couple of different ways. Uh, one of the old school ways is to use a carabiner. Um, there are different sizes available, so and different weights. You want to make sure you don't get the decorative key ring style because that wouldn't be strong enough. But you know, at a, at the hardware store, you can kind of pick your size depending on the size of your dog. Um, so this carabiner, I could take this and put it on the O ring. So the O ring is underneath, and I'm going to hook this carabiner. Here and then take her flat collar. This is a martingale, so I want to make sure I'm not putting it on that part, but just on any of the rings on your flat collar. And now you can see that it's not really doing anything here. I still have action the same way I would, but if this popped off for any reason unexpectedly, I would still be attached to my dog on their flat collar. Now that this, again, is really a solid backup, but it is does tend to pull a little bit, especially because we don't put the flat collars on tightly. So, you know, over time, this could tug that down a little bit. So there's another option that I like, especially for the smaller dogs that you don't want kind of a, this heavy carabiner on. And it's called a coupler. It's not the kind of coupler that you would use to walk two dogs at a time. It's actually made to attach two collars to each other. So uh, I can put, um, let you know where I get these, but the, it's got a short end and a long end. So the short end would go again on this O-ring underneath. And then the long end would go on the ring on the flat collar. So now I have the same kind of backup. If my prong collar pops off, I'm still attached to my flat collar, but I don't have the weight and the pulling downward. The difference in cost is just a couple dollars. So uh, I find this a really nice option. The other reason I like this particular style of coupler is it has this extra ring. So if I'm worried about my leash popping off, Again, a rare thing, but something to think about. I can actually now have a backup for my leash and my prong collar. That's a lot of uh, hooking up to do, but if you get in the habit, it's no big deal. And the last thing you want to happen is your prong collar popping off when you're at a street, your dog sees a squirrel or whatever else might be um, really a sad safety situation. Um, I'm going to show you one more option for those people that don't really like all this finagling around with all of these, these clips and doodads. So I'm going to take all of this off, right? So now I've got my prong and I've got my flat collar. So plain old slip collar, right? You'll see these, they're, they come as one long leash, but this is just a slip collar. Uh, fits nice and loose, just slides over. I'm gonna put that um, right above, or I'm sorry, right below my prong collar. And then I'm going to, no, I'm not hooking now to the O-ring at all. I'm just putting this on my D-ring. This is my control and I'm gonna hook onto the slip lead. So slip lead never gets tight. You want it big enough so it's never getting tight when you pull on the prong. But if the prong came off and I was still on the slip lead, now that's gonna tighten up and it won't slip over my dog's head and I have my dog no matter what. Right, so a little $5 slip collar is also a really nice backup. So it really just depends what works best for you. But I 
definitely.